Today I'm here to talk about a very select few things, but the things I'm talking about I'll talk about in depth, but I won't be here for very long. I'm just here to talk about a few things that I have in my collection of doodads and thingamabobs. First up in that series of things is in fact the headphones I'm wearing right here, the Parrot Zik Ones by Stark. I actually got this off of a website called Poshmark, which is normally like a fashion sort of like clothing eBay equivalent, but it sells all sorts of other stuff, just like headphones, which is one of the things that I bought. I actually bought this for about 50 bucks. Cheapest I could find it, honestly, was that price, although the compromise was when I received it. It smelled heavily of cigarette smoke. The person who used it did not disclose that they were, in fact, a heavy smoker. So that was something I had to worry about, like, when I was using it. Like, I had, I had headaches from just the sheer amount of cigarette smell that was on the device itself. I, I have a very bad sensitivity to that sort of thing. I will never smoke in my life. So I, I, I do not like the fact that that came with uh, that cigarette smell. Once that kind of wore, wore off, which it has mostly worn off by now, had it for about a week, so that's good. The device itself was, was a nightmare to set up. First and foremost, it came with one of the, one of the lesser firmware when I, when I first arrived. So I had to search the internet for a copy of the latest firmware, and then I had to figure out how to actually hook it up. I tried all sorts of different cables, but if you only use the official cable, then it'll show up as a USB device. And then I can plop in the firmware, update that, and then I could go to this deprecated app on uh, Android and then I could go into that app and pair this up and then I could rename it. I can also adjust the settings and tune it to my liking, which I decided to go with the Lou Reed setting. Previously, it had this sort of like auditory, like spatial sound thing that I freaking hate. So I turned that off. I, uh, I adjusted it to the Lou Reed settings and I freaking kept the active noise canceling because that's one of the main things I like about this pair of headphones. It has great noise canceling. Honestly, I think it has like three or four mics on it that do a great job of blocking out sound, which is why I'm not wearing this because I want to be able to hear myself while I'm recording. That's why I don't wear a lot of headphones while I'm recording because I want to be able to hear myself talk. They do have touch controls. If you swipe up, the volume goes up. If you swipe down, the volume goes down. If you swipe like to the left and right, which I know is reversed on the camera, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, you can either go back in the track or go forward a track. And uh, if, you, if you tap it, it pauses, which is kind of annoying. Like if I'm laying somewhere and I'm like listening to something, all of a sudden it goes boop. It'll just pause. Honestly, it's, it's what, what you get for something of this caliber. It is wireless, which is good uh, because in this case, uh, if you look at this uh, plate, if I take it off, there is a uh, replaceable battery on it. It comes with a battery that is still made to this day that you can replace it with if that battery on this device fails. I actually ordered a spare battery, although I ordered it from Florida and at the current time, uh, there's a hurricane going on. So it's gonna take a long time to get here because of the hurricane. Hurricane Helene or Hel Helene, I don't know how to say it. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be something I'm gonna have to do with. That's fun. But once that arrives, I'll be able to just, uh, once this thing drains, I can just uh, pop in the new battery and have a whole set of new charge for uh, however many hours I use uh, to listen to uh, music and whatnot. Uh, I will say this much, um, using this without Bluetooth and using this with a wire, you have to turn on the actual device if you want to get all the enhanced features like the uh, audio uh, active noise canceling, or if you want to get the uh, the enhanced like loop read setting or whatever, like all, all your sort of like computer program settings are, are saved when the device is on. When it's off, it just acts like a normal wire head. Phone. But the good news is if you take the battery out, like if for, if for some reason for one day that battery is no longer manufactured, I've tested it, take the battery out and you plug it in through auxiliary, it will work. So it, it is it's basically foolproof. I mean, yeah, the design is a little bit sort of iffy when it comes to the build quality, but it's really nice, but I have noticed a little bit of degradation based on the person who previously had it. So I think one day it might fail. Not to mention that the uh, ear pads have a setting where if you put it on your head, it'll like detect that there's sound. Whereas if you have it off uh, and, and it's not pressed Pressing this button on uh, this um, ear pad, it, it won't recognize that uh, it's on your head and it won't play sound. Like it, I believe that ear pad makes it so it's not exactly the most replaceable ear pad. Like if it gets damaged, you have to basically either wire it yourself and get your own custom ear pad, or basically throw it away, which kind of sucks. But overall, I would say that's worth the price of admission. I, I paid a decent chunk of money. I paid about 50 bucks for it, but I say that for that price, it is well worth it. Parrot unfortunately does not make these headphones anymore. They made three revisions of this headphones, and none of them are mentioned anywhere on their website. Now they strictly just work on drones and whatnot. So that's basically all they do nowadays. If you can find it for cheap, and find it for better condition than I have, I'd say go ahead. Uh, the new ones that, that are in the box go for like 130, 150. So if you want to show out money for that, then go right ahead. But I decided to go with used, which I know it's kind of risky, but 
who cares anyway that's all i gotta say and next time we're gonna talk about another set of headphones and not talk about it as long as i talked about this set of headphones god damn I'm back for part two everybody so let's talk about the next set of headphones that being old reliable the akg k240s but if you notice they got felt uh pads as well as if you can see which is i know it's hard they got freaking uh garfield softies in them again yes i bought another pair of garfield softies and i also bought um a pair of uh, replacement ear pads but they're velour for the AKG K240s. It definitely does change the sound quality. It reminds me more of the Samsons, uh, the SR, whatever the hell they're called, that I had before. Those actually broke because the, the cable is not detachable, and uh, of course the cable would be the part that I would always fail. But uh, yeah, I decided to get a similar sound profile for my AKGs because I love that sort of sound profile. And uh, I will say this much, um, it was kind of expensive. I mean, I believe the uh, floor pads were close to 20 bucks, and the uh, Garfield Softies were 25, 26, maybe 20 so I know that it's definitely something that I wouldn't recommend for most people. Next up is uh, a screen protector for my uh, Miu Mini Plus. Yes, I bought five of them because the one I had previously that came with the uh, console broke, which is supposed to, it's supposed to protect your screen. I bought, uh, as you can see, five of these things right here or at least uh, four in my hand because one of them I did end up using and it came with a frick ton of uh, wet wipes and uh, dry wipes. And I also bought uh, these uh, mic pop filters. Uh, I was originally gonna use them on these uh, headphones right here to uh, use as foam pads and I ended up not needing them because uh, the freaking uh, AKGs are, uh, these ones in particular are open backs and so blocking them out with that much foam as well as the, uh, the Garfield Softies is a bit too much sound blockage and doesn't sound right. Whereas with just the Garfield Softies it sounds perfect and, and, and believe it or not with just the uh microphone pads they also sound pretty decent as well so if i ever want to switch it out for the microphone pads i already have two pre-cut ones that i could totally use to uh replace the foam on there if i wanted to by the way did i mention that uh i got uh, a new comforter right here if you look right behind me yes indeed my own comforter got uh tore up because of my big doggy emmett he's a cute baby but goddamn is he reckless and uh speaking of uh freaking nothing to do with the subject i don't even know why i said speaking of i got crocs i got big tie-dye clown feet crocs they're size 12 uh they're freaking supposed to be at work crocs because they got no holes in them besides little boosters that have uh two holes on the side they're like art brand crocs they're freaking you know big and comfy and i love them because i'm a big proprietor of crocs i've always worn crocs pretty much all my adulthood and i can't get enough of them honestly not sponsored but i just thought i'd get that out of the way that i love me some freaking crocs anyway pow, pow, whoop, whoop. First up in a series of five, assuming I don't buy any more games, but who knows, it is me after all, I do buy games in between recordings, kind of my MO, but the first game in alphabetical order is a game that I bought from uh, Best Buy. It was published by Devolver Digital, I believe it was originally part of some limited run equivalent thing. That's sort of fad. Yes, it was $20, but with a $5 coupon that I got, I was able to get it for $16.04, including tax, which by the way, me no lucky tax, uh, taxation is theft, just a reminder. This game in question is a game called bro force yes and uh, if you look right here got a little bit of damage all over the case because I'm, I'm presuming whoever sealed it just didn't fucking take care of it and it was supposed to be new but it doesn't really feel like it's new it came like that i haven't done shit to it yeah if you look inside basically it comes with your standard sort of warranty slash eula and that's basically it it's a freaking sort of contra running gun sort of uh metal slug sort of clone the main Main emphasis is on macho bros that together you all team up try to defeat the evil baddie and all the bros are kind of based off like various movie and television characters like you know chuck norris mr t you know uh arnold schwarzenegger like macgyver stuff like that sort of badasses bro and basically you use the uh, bros as lives uh depending on how many you pick up in the uh battlefield and you beat all the enemies and you try to make it to the end and defeat the main evil baddie of that level and then you go on your helicopter and go to the next level there's also some stealth missions sort of things where you have one character it's sort of like an iron man mode but there actually is a real iron man mode called iron bro which by the way uh you can only unlock once you've unlocked a ton of different bros which i'm assuming is going to be towards the end of the game uh, there's also an online component it is definitely emphasized that you should play with co-op but uh, i don't have any friends and i don't have online because i don't want to pay for that shit because i got a pc that I can just play online for free but yeah um there is online in that regard so they do want you to 
play with friends, although God knows if anybody's actually in the game when I'm playing, you know, if I were to have online. This game is goes for a cheap on, on uh, Steam. On top of that, I believe with my Steam Family Share, which the new Steam Family Share is OPSL, I just want to say that right off the bat. Uh, I believe I do have Broforce, but I, I just wanted it physically, and I bought it before I realized that uh, Steam Family Share came back with a vengeance, and now it's OP as shit. I have gotten decently far. Overall, I would say pick it up if you want it. Physically, should I say pick it up? I don't know. But it's like five bucks on whatever platform you choose if it's on sale. If not, it's like 15, which is literally including tax, how much I would have paid for digitally is how much I paid for the physical, which I think is incredible. Anyway, that's all I got to say. And let's move on to the next segmento. I don't know if that's a word. I just made that up. Bye. So I've decided before moving on to the next game, I'm going to spoil everything that's going to come up as well as talk about the stuff that I already talked about. I'm going to be talking about the uh, price in which I paid for them as well as the price that it would be before taxes and other such details that I want to give out. And we'll go in order on when I'm going to show them and whatever I've already shown. So first up is the Parrot Zik ones. Uh, I got those obviously for $50, which I think I mentioned, but with tax that would end up being $53.50 free shipping. Uh, and the next Next up was obviously the mic pop filters um, and the screen protectors, which I got from AliExpress. The mic pop filters were four of them. It was 533 total. It was 508 before tax on AliExpress, but I used 10 coins. They got me like 10 cents off. And with the screen protectors, that was 525 total, 516 before tax. And I ended up using 26 coins on that to get uh, 26 cents off the total purchase. And this 26 coins off also applies to the tax as well. I don't know how that works, but that's just how that goes. And then the guard field softies that you saw on my AKGs. I got this for $26.43. I was $25.10 before tax. Ear pads were $21.35. They were $19.95 before tax. In the games that we're talking about, first up was obviously Pro Force, which I already mentioned was $15 and obviously $15 plus $1.04 tax. I was next going to talk about Gravity Rush Remastered. And I know crazy. I managed to get it for $54.46, which is pretty dang good, honestly. And it was $15.99 and it was the best offer that was auto accepted. The guy um, probably would have taken even less, which is crazy to me. That's freaking awesome. I love that. Next up is Need for Speed Heat, which I got at Walmart while I was picking up something else for my family. Uh, it was $19.93 before taxes for a total of $21.33. It's right here. Just so you know, we'll talk about this later. I picked it up on clearance at Walmart, which is why it was so cheap. Although uh, I know like on actual like PSN, you get it for mega mega cheap digitally but i just wanted it physically because you know who cares and finally it is freaking penguin wars and i got that for uh 1832 and that's 1742 before taxes there's another game that i got but i'm gonna save that for when it actually comes in there's a same possibility that it might come in broken or it might be a scam or whatever and they have to return it i don't want to hedge my bets i'm just gonna wait until that comes in and and that one i think i did actually submit an offer i want to say although i think i actually paid like $30 exactly for they did the math based on like how much uh, the tax and the shipping was. But we'll get to that when we get to that. That's all I got to say. And uh, let's move on to the next segment. Next up is a game that I already showed. So I might as well just show it. It's freaking Gravity Rush Remastered. Yes, it's a port of the PS Vita game. It looks pretty uh, scuffed on PS4, but I love it. I know it has a bit of issue with motion sickness for certain people. And that kind of applies to me. But if I play in short sessions, I should be okay. Gravity Rush 2 definitely did alleviate a lot of that issues for a lot of people it's a freaking hong kong game the first hong kong game that i actually own is chinese and english although of course the version i play is in english if you look inside it's got uh just a bunch of eula shit but look there's isn't that cool disc yes indeed and it came legit sealed and i uh like i said before in the previous uh section of the video i paid a uh pretty decent price for it yeah, I pretty much uh, just lowballed the person with uh, giving a random offer, and they just happened to accept that. You know, I could have gotten it lower, like I mentioned before. It plays very similar to the second game. Obviously, though, it's uh, it's the prequel, so it covers the origin stories of your main character. I know this doesn't go for too terribly much digitally, but I just really want both games physically. I really do. And also, I want pretty much all the good Japan Studio games on PS4 eventually. And that's the goal. If I went to PS3, I'd also buy all the Japan Studio PS3 games. I'll just emulate. Was it worth the price that I paid? Ideally, I would have loved to pay significantly 
cheaper. But given it wasn't a very popular game at the time and that most ESRB copies go for insane prices, this is the best I'm going to be able to do with the version that I was given. I say play it digitally. Or if you really want to, just wait until PS Vita emulation gets like good enough or you can just play the original upscaled. It'll probably look better than the Gravity Rush Remastered. Or who knows, maybe eventually PS4 emulation will be way better and then you can mod Gravity Rush Remastered on there. Who knows? I mean, I do know that, uh, you know, obviously the PS Vita version had a lot of weird control shit they had to modify for the PS4. So maybe you'd want to emulate the PS4 version. Who knows? That's way down the line. Though. I, I just love the music of the game. The graphics look good on the PS Vita. I will say this much. I mean, they look decent for a port, you know, for a remaster. I love the visual cutscenes. I love the Japanese flair. It just reminds me so much that like Sony is just in the gutter. With this recent PS5 Pro announcement, it really goes to show that Sony does not know what the hell they're doing. And for as much grievances as people had with the PS3 and how much of a failure it was at first, the game quality and the game selection was pretty damn good. And there's a ton more exclusives on the PS3. And the PS4 even, for God's sake. But I say this game's for everybody, I would say probably not. I do know that uh, the gravity shifting mechanics are kind of a turn off for some, and it certainly was a pretty unique concept at the time, at least in, in a 3D space. I know stuff like Glitter V6 Times existed beforehand, or even like that, uh, that way forward uh, Wendy the Witch game as well. I know the existence of shifting gravity up and down with the press of a button exists Exists. But the way that uh, Gravity Rush did it, I think is very cool. And Gravity Rush 2 is an even better game. So pick up both. Why not? Just do it digitally. You know, if you want to save tons of moolah, cash, and money. By the way, before we move on, that uh, Wendy game was called Wendy Every Which Way. It released in September 2001, so yikes. Uh, apparently it was supposed to be based off some planned reboot anime series of Wendy the Witch. I don't know. That game later on inspired a game called Mighty Flip Chance, which released in 2009, also before Gravity Rush. And one game that I forgot to mention altogether, a game that was well before any of the games I mentioned, is a game called Metal Storm by Iron. They're released uh, on the uh, NES, which is obviously well before. 2001. Anyway, that one was probably the granddaddy of all gravity games because I can't think of any one game that came out before that that did that. Next up is a game called NFS Heat, otherwise called Need for Speed Heat. Look right there. Yes, it's developed by Ghost, published by EA. Um, I don't know where the hell Criterion is these days. They're making God knows what else besides what they should be making, that being Burnout. Freaking Need for Speed Heat comes with a thing telling you to download the app, which I'm never going to do. Uh, the game itself is pretty feature complete on the disc. Uh, there's a whole online mode which EA wants you to log into the EA ecosystem, the sort of EA account they want you to put in, but I decide to uh, skip that every single time and just play offline and play uh, single player. I know they really want you to play multiplayer, but uh, that's not what I'm playing this for. I know EA also has like a very strict banning system for words they think are inappropriate. Like for example, like my brother has a username uh, and in that username, I guess like maybe some sort of combination of letters, maybe FM. Whenever he tries to log into some sort of EA game, it gets banned and he can't play multiplayer. So like he literally bought like a multiplayer only game because his username, they banned him, which like there's literally nothing wrong with his username. EA, they did decent on this one. There's no microtransactions. There's really no sort of extra monetization scheme. It's filled with your sort of woke garbage that I don't like in certain games. Other than that, it's it's decent. You know, I mean, I, I totally ignore the story, but God knows the game does not want you to ignore the story. It does everything in its power to try to get you to listen to this god-awful story, because nobody plays racing games for the story, I'm sorry to tell you EA. I mean, is it as good as the sort of uh, Need for Speed Underground series? Probably not. It has sort of arcade -y feel. It's definitely not Gran Turismo or whatnot. I hate simulation racing games. I love the arcade -y feel of games. I think controls in this one are decent. I tend to find it controls better if you uh, flick the stick up and move it left to right, sort of like how you would on a steering wheel, if you will, like kind of uh, on the outer edge. I think it's how that works. Decent game. Uh, I would say pick it up probably physically if you can find it for a nice tiny That's a decent price. Or if not, just pick it up digitally for uber cheap. And also on PC, it's pretty cheap too. Although I can't guarantee uh, multiplayer is going to be any fun because I haven't played it. So let's move on to the next game. The second to last game. Let's go to the next part. Whoopee! Hola, what's up? 
next part coming your way as in now let's start off with uh, the first item that being what is this another pair of uh parasitic ones yes they're not mine they're my friends i won an auction for 40 dollars and i paid 10 10 shipping and ended up being 50 10 plus 280 equals 52.90 they're way nicer than mine and they're cheaper to boot than the ones that uh, i paid for i'm very jealous of my family friend who uh end up paying for these with cash and i'm going to be giving them to him once he comes over next time i see him chuck if you're seeing this they're in safe hands don't you worry they sound just like my other parrots which i'm wearing right now they're nicer they don't smell like cigarettes nicer condition and on top of that it came with a cord a charging cord and uh i'm gonna throw in an auxiliary cord that i got from one of my other headphones that are now broken i'm gonna be including that in chuck's uh freaking goodie bag and he's gonna love it and i'm gonna help set him up get him to hook up to his phone and we're gonna be golden baby let's freaking go and speaking of the parrots i also got another accessory this one's for me though this is not for my friend uh it's an mpf battery yes i got it from the official mpf website i got it for 885 was 499 shipping although i'm pretty sure the taxes were baked into the total because it apparently didn't have any it was 1384 so i'm assuming it was a uh, hidden tax so there you go these work just fine inside of my parrots if these ever run out of juice uh, the batteries inside i just flip flop them in i got a whole new set of charge pretty freaking sweet those are the things that i've gotten in between the last time you've seen me uh there's another thing but i'm gonna save that for a whole other recording boo did i scare you by the way it is close to halloween so i thought i might as well include a spoopy jump scare and totally not because i just forgot what i was talking about towards the end of the last recording so i just cut it anyway let's move on to the next part of the video uh first we're gonna talk about something kind of boring oh so boring but it's indeed more crocs because i need some for when i'm not going about the town for when i actually have like some sort of professional setting that i need to go to you know it's not the best idea to wear tie-dye crocs so maybe you want to wear something that resembles more like a converse or something you never know i think they'd be more professional but anyway what do i know they fit just fine they fit like a glove almost uh, but except for your feet very comfortable love them the amazon sent me size nines to begin with so i had to return that and uh get a size 12 uh which is what i ordered to the begin with either way though let's move on to the co-main event hopefully the co-main event unless i pull a fast one and order yet another game that game is odin sphere i don't know how the hell to say it l e i f thorn r a s i r what the fuck does that mean i don't know but it's odin sphere i don't know either way it's the uh ps4 remaster of the classic ps2 game odin sphere made by one of my favorite companies Millaware. I've been wanting this one for quite a while. I offered $23.94 on eBay. I paid $4.38 shipping. You combine that with $168 tax because tax 7% in indiana you get 30 dollars exactly the seller initially sent an offer i waited because i didn't have any money but then the seller lowered the price so i counter offered what i thought was a low ball price and they accepted which i was very happy about uh, the game itself comes with a little bitty ad talking about another uh, nis game and you wear something kind of crazy this game is rated six in germany for six year olds it's rated peggy 12 in uh europe it's m in australia which means 15 year olds in the u.s it's t for which is 13 year olds in japan it's sero b which is also for 12 year olds besides japan and europe nobody seemingly can agree on what this game should be rated fuck if i know but in my opinion i think probably 13 and 12 is probably more accurate honestly i don't know what the fuck germany's thinking with six like when these six year olds can play the freaking Odin sphere even though it has the booba and the slight alcohol drinking and the freaking bad language all of a sudden i turned into indian i don't know what the hell happened to that accent fuck that Odin sphere itself is a nice action platformer adventure sort of game similar to a uh, mirror moss of the demon blade which like i mentioned in previous videos is probably my favorite freaking vanilla war game and unfortunately that one is only on wii and ps vita oddly enough which i don't own either of those consoles but i can play it through legal means totally not piracy this one i can only play through ps4 if i want the updated visuals i guess i could emulate the ps2 version but this actually comes with the original ps2 version included i decided to buy it it's very fun i played about the the first I think like four chapters I want to say I don't know how long the game is maybe somebody like in the comments would be like Psh, that's like nothing either way though I, I played as much as I can before reviewing this keep in mind I didn't get this that long ago I would say this is a great game visually it's fantastic uh, music is great too I would say overall pick this up if you can find it for cheap which I did thankfully but it's probably going for more like 
40 bucks. If you want the Western copy, it's going to be like 50 or 60 because for some reason people do not like that sort of Peggy 12 on the box, but I don't really care. It's my first Peggy game on PS4. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it, and hopefully I'll see you in the last part where we talk about the final game, which you already know, it's freaking Penguin Wars. Let's go. Pew, 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 pew. I don't know why I powered down there. That's weird. Hey, real quick, I forgot to mention uh, this game also came out on PS3 and PS Vita. Although uh, PS Vita is obviously a lot more compressed and it's definitely not high definition, I would say, visually wise. Although the OLED screen is nice, but it's nowhere near as nice as obviously the PS4 updated visuals. And the PS3 is decent, but and I actually could emulate the PS3 if I wanted to, but I would never do that because I'm a good boy who doesn't emulate at all. Wink. That wink is, for uh, legal purposes, a joke. That's the update I have to give you. Let's go to the next part already. God damn it. What's up, guys? We're here to talk about the last game of the video. I know it only took, like, I don't know how many minutes when I cut this down, but it's going to be more than what I thought. I said it was going to be a short video. I was wrong. Anywho, the last game of the video. Let's say it without further ado. Penguin Wars! Yay! Penguin Wars! The case itself is kind of beat up, honestly. Uh, it's on the best condition, but look, the game's intact. It's right there. It says Penguin Wars. Uh, this is a, uh, a game, a remake, or a reimagining, if if you will, of a classic uh, Famicom slash NES game by uh, Sunsoft called Penguin Wars. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's made by uh, freaking Hamster, which you may know from several of the uh, Neo Geo games that appear on Switch, as well as a bunch of other classic arcade games to get emulated. They were, they're an emulation powerhouse, but as of uh, when this game came out, 2018, they were making a game called Penguin Wars. So they're probably only like a year into making all those Switch games. They weren't really known for that yet so maybe they were known for penguin wars at the time i don't know but because like i saw that it was really cheap on gamestop and i was like why not dude well, it looks really fun it's basically like dodgeball except for the mix of like billiards where basically you like throw balls at other animals use special attacks or use special defense and then you basically toss them and try to get all the balls onto the same realm or try to attack the opponent enough times to lower their health or you do tag team or you do like snk king of fighters style where you take turns and tournament you know that sort of thing the game's not that long i mean i'm already pretty much done with it but it's pretty addicting i mean i imagine i will probably beat this sooner rather than later and is it worth the money i paid for it i'd say yes indeed the graphics are very basic uh they're kind of like a mix of 2d and 3d you know it's very much a budget style game it's just a good old grand old time and this is well before uh sunsoft decided that they wanted to reboot every single one of their games like obviously i own the hibiyuriki 2 game and they're also making another uh mr game gimmick game which is cool they also made pal world is it called power world what is it called pause it was close ish it's called trip world which they actually took somebody's fan uh dx patch and made into an official game you can buy on modern platforms called trip world dx i believe there's also a limited run gbc copy if i'm not mistaken yeah so they're remaking and redoing all their games isn't that cool i mean honestly up until like a few years ago i didn't even realize sunsoft was still around they were still commissioning games and they still operate to this day i, I thought they went under you know after the genesis you know in super nintendo era because they thought you know they didn't make games for a while i mean they made, they made they made a few i mean there was that blaster master game for ps1 but that game sucked there's also that blaster master remake for WiiWare, which also sucked but i thought like you know in between maybe the wii and the xbox 360 slash ps3 generation i thought they would have died by then but i guess not speaking of power world because i call it trip world power world what do you think of that lawsuit <laughs> totally topical guys kind of dumb that nintendo patented some very basic bitch ass shit i mean sega did the same thing with like shifting camera angles that move which is why you saw the racing games back then whenever they switched to a, a like a higher camera angle it just like be a sudden jump cut because uh, they patented the moving camera which is very ridiculous. On top of that, Warner Brothers also patented, like, whatever system you call where they had it in Shadow War and Shadow Mordor, where, like, an enemy could come back stronger and, like, the revenge system, if you will. But, yeah, they patented that. So be it. Oh, yeah, and Amco also patented, like, making mini games during loading screens. Old computer games in the UK would do that well before Namco did. I guess it's about who files the patent first, unfortunately, not who actually made it first. And anyway, it's a long-ass tangent. Yeah. Um, bye. <laughs>